Hello everyone. So in this tutorial we are going to go over sculpting a rock in ZBrush. This can be also used as a basic introduction to ZBrush for those of you who are not already familiar with the software. Okay so firstly we are going to have a quick analysis of what we are working with here. Um, I've completed this rough painting in Photoshop of my diorama concept and I'm looking at the size and shapes of the rocks in the scene. So the rocks I have here are quite big and require perhaps more texture space than other rocks uh, you would see in your typical game. I am particularly interested in the flatter shaped rocks I've got nearer the house in this piece. Um, I think that they'll dictate what fits around them more so than the rocks at the front. Of course, we can't just look at artwork, we also have to look at real life. So here are some rocks from the countryside. I like this reference photo in particular because uh, it is showing me how the rocks will blend in with the grass and other scenery around them. And here of course we have some closer up textures to examine also. Right, so let's get into ZBrush. The first thing you want to do is change the document size to fit your scene like so. Go to document, set height and width, and resize. Now our canvas area is larger, and now we need an object to start sculpting on. So I'm going to click on my shapes on the right hand side and select Sphere 3D. And before I draw that out, I'm going to change my material to matcap grey to help me visualise what I'm doing here. With draw mode selected at the top, click and drag out your object and hold down shift just after left clicking to make your object snap to a right angle like this. Make sure edit mode and draw mode are both selected on the top panel and click make poly mesh 3D on the right hand side. Now the mesh is ready for us to start sculpting. But let's do some quick name changes first. On the right hand side click subtool and you'll see your shape listed here. So each separate mesh in ZBrush is listed as a subtool. If you have multiple meshes in this rollout, you can move and save them all simultaneously. I'm going to rename my selected subtool to Rock. Now, if I select Draw Polyframe on the lower right tab, it will display the wireframe of my mesh. The shortcut for this is Alt F. Now, I want more geometry to work with in order to speed up the sculpting process, so I'm going to head over to the geometry panel and click subdivide. The shortcut for this is Control D. You will now notice that your mesh has been divided and that your active polygon points at the top of the screen have quadrupled. I'm now going to go ahead and subdivide again so I'm on level 3 subdivision. Now let's select a decent brush for the job. I recommend when you are learning, you stick to fewer brushes and learn to get the most out of them first. Because we are sculpting a rock, it is a good idea to use a brush that has some grittiness to it. So I'm going to click on my brushes on the top left and select Clay Build Up. The shortcut for this brush is BCB. Okay, so if you're still not familiar with the general navigation in ZBrush, here is a really quick run through. It is left click and drag on an empty area to rotate around your object and it is alt and left click and drag to move your planar view of your object. You can change your brush sizes with the box brackets just like in Photoshop and of course if you left click and drag over your object you will sculpt. To sculpt inwards rather than outwards hold down alt when applying your brush stroke to your object. To zoom in or out Hold down Alt and left click and drag, but then release Alt and your mouse movement should zoom you in or out like so. Okay, we'll go back to the clay build up brush shortly, but first I want you to optimize your workflow by pulling out chunks of geometry with the move topological brush. The shortcut for this brush is BMT. Now, as you can see, I am able to pull out large sections of the mesh really quickly. I want this object to be asymmetrical, but if you want what you do one side to be applied to the other, then just press X to activate symmetry. Like many other programs, you can undo and redo your actions with Ctrl Z or Ctrl Alt Z accordingly. 
You can also smooth out some of your brush strokes by holding shift as you sculpt, but I don't recommend doing that too often for something with a rough surface like a rock. I'm now going to switch back to my clay build-up brush and start sculpting out some edges and crevices. You should always use big, confident strokes to start with before diving into refined detail on one particular area. Remember to vary up your inward to outward sculpting by holding down Alt as you sculpt. You can also trim down sections of your geometry by holding down Control Shift and selecting the Trim Lasso brush. Make a clockwise selection to delete everything outside of the lasso and an anti-clockwise selection to delete everything inside of the lasso. Once you have altered about a lot of your geometry, you will likely notice that some of your polygons are horribly stretched out. To fix this, delete your lower subdivisions and press Dynamesh. This function will spread out the polygons as evenly as it can over your object whilst preserving its form. This slider works in thousands, so for example, 128 means that it will try to target 128,000 polygons. I want my detail levels to be higher than that, so I set my target to a larger amount like so. I personally advise that when you don't want to use Dynamesh to deselect it, this just helps to avoid any accidental slowdowns. But if you do leave it highlighted, then whenever you control and click drag in an empty area, it will trigger it, so bear that in mind. I'm now going to continue and repeat this process with the big shape manipulations on this model. As you can see, I'm constantly mixing up the use of the trim lasso and the clay build-up brushes. As we do get more defined, I recommend using more circular movements so that you optimise the texture and grittiness of your strokes. I like to use the damn standard brush to etch in finer cracks and crevices into my object. The shortcut for this brush is BDS. It's good to look back at your references to help influence your imagery as you build upon the detail. In regards to this high resolution sculpt, from here on out it is very much a case of using your artistic eye and repeating the techniques I've taught you throughout this video. You should save your work frequently. It is best to save both the project file by pressing Ctrl less, this is like saving the scene in 3ds Max, and you'll also want to save your selected mesh or meshes as well by going to Save Tool in the top right like so. Once you've got your sculpt to a stage you are happy with, you will of course want to create a lower resolution of it. Because the rock is a simple object, this can be done fairly quickly using the Zedri musher under the geometry panel. However, before doing this, I recommend duplicating your subtool like I have in the subtool panel. So under Zedri mesh you'll notice two sliders, one being adaptive and the other being curve strength. These are more relevant when you create guides for your topology. For now, all you really need to understand is that adaptive size represents how much you will allow Zedri Mesh to change the resolution of your geometry, and curve strengths represents how much Zedri Mesh will prioritize the curves in your current mesh. Just like Dynamesh, Zedri Mesh also has a slider that tells it the target amount of polygons to aim for. It is important to remember that a single quad polygon is worth two triangles. So whatever your active points are, double that number and that will be your triangle count. This rock is also going to be quite big in my scene, and I have a lot of triangles to play with, so I'm going to aim for around 500 to 700 polygons, which will be 1,000 to 1,400 triangles respectively. You may wish to go lower or higher than this number depending on the size, detail and importance of your rock. Once you have prepared your settings, press said remesh and view your results. Do not worry if you do not get what you are aiming for the first few times. You can always undo and keep altering your settings until you get something decent. Right now, I'm mostly happy with this mesh as my lower resolution. At this stage, you can choose whether or not you want to unwrap it in ZBrush or make some further adjustments in another software like 3ds Max first. I'm going to export my mesh to 3ds Max. So I just go to the top right and press export. Then I choose where I want to save it and select OBJ as the file type. I would also advise repeating this process again with your high resolution base mesh too, so that both your high and low models are nicely backed up. Now in Max, I simply import the OBJ file that I've just exported. I'm now going to convert the mesh to an editable poly and make some further minor adjustments. Once this is done, we can apply an unwrap UVW modifier over the model and create a seam like so. I'm just going to use the pelt mapping tool and relax function to get the UVs I need for this mesh. 
I know that I'll be needing other assets to fill this space, so I'm just going to move this off to the side for now. Now that my lower resolution model is unwrapped, I can take it back into ZBrush and tie it to the higher resolution mesh using the project function, but that is for another video, once I fill this UVW space with my other models. So that about wraps it up for this tutorial, I hope this has helped you all, and thanks for watching, see you next time.